Well, Mr. Donnan, Movie Movie is your Christmas present to yes. a portion of the, the nation, at least, who will be seeing it come Christmas Day. In this film, when you were starting the project, Mr. Donnan, what was it that you were trying to get across, or what is it you want audiences to understand about this picture? Well, what we were doing, which is making a film today, which is new in every way, which is a truly warm and funny look at the way films were made in the early 30s. And uh, we thought there was something fresh in making not one film, but two films to give you a look at the whole feeling of what America was like and what movies were like in the 30s. And we chose a specific uh, kind of film company for the 30s and a group of actors which were reminiscent of the actors from the early 30s. And we chose the, the stories which really we felt represented the, the sort of uh, morality which was allowed to be seen on the screen of the 30s. And we, we loved all that and love all that today and wanted to have an opportunity to put it on the screen in a new way and to, to look at it and love it again. Your film carries a PG rating. Why is, for, for, what, for what reason is it PG? I, that I don't know. I have nothing to do with the ratings. Or we made our film, submitted it, and it came back PG. I, who said what it should be? I don't know. Maybe it the could, fight scenes would be the only thing, the violence of the or, fight scenes. I don't know. It could be the relationship of the dancer, the nightclub dancer, or her costumes, the way she's dressed, or the fact that she's the mistress of the manager. There are things in it that they may, may feel are not suitable for a G rating. There must be, because there was no question of it being a G rating. There must be a lot in it. If the film had been made in the 30s, who might have played some of those roles in the two movies? Well, I think it would have been, uh, for example, George Scott would have been uh, in the musical film. He would have been Warner Baxter or Clark Gable uh, as Spats Baxter. The grizzled old fight manager could have been anyone from uh, Edward G. Robinson to um, uh, Wallace Beery might have played the grizzled old fight manager. The part that Trish Vanderveer plays, uh, Isabel, might have been uh, B.B. Daniels the, in 42nd Street. Um, obviously, the part Rebecca York plays would have been Ruby Keeler. And Barry Bostwick in the musical would be Dick Powell. Uh, the boxer would have either been, if it was a little later, would have been John Garfield, could have been Jimmy Cagney. Uh, in the first film, uh, there are lots of counterparts for those roles. In the film, in the musical of Movie Movie, you have two production numbers, which are really just dynamite. Good. The one with the bicycles. Yes. Now talk, talk a little bit about that. Tell me about that. Well, we, that particular movie, the Baxter's Beauties of 1933 is a movie which is very much like the Bur Busby Berkeley movies. And it seemed to us that he always had some large number of peculiar objects <laughs> on stage, like a hundred pianos, or a, he had uh, another time he had a hundred violins and a hundred harps. And we were trying to do something which was amusing and that he hadn't done. It would have been easy to copy it, but we wanted to do something that was sort of a comment on what Busby Berkeley did, and we decided bicycles, first of all, would make wonderful patterns, and we could do interesting things with girls being on the back of them while the boys pedaled, and the girls doing their arabesques and so on as the bicycles move. So we tried it with bicycles. I must say, from the dancer's point of view, it was very worrying. They had demanded a lot more money because it was dangerous for them and so on. But I was I wondering how many collisions and... Quite a lot. <laughs> and quite a lot. Quite can. a lot, yes. <laughs> quite a lot. No one was really hurt, but there were, it was difficult. Then the finale. The uh, going up the large ramp, you mean? Yes, well, we just felt that was typical of what uh, Hollywood was in those musicals. It, we actually filmed it on the largest stage in the movie business at Warner Brothers. 
we had in that set is absolutely gigantic. That's another sort of Busby Berkeley device that we chose to use. When the girls were dancing up that ramp, the ramp was 65 feet high and, uh, you know, very narrow and they were quite frightened. But that wasn't the point I'm making. Then at the end of the story where George Scott comes out on the stage to take his curtain calls, that's a, a little ramp on a stage in a theater, in a proper theater. That set that the people dance on could in no way get inside of a, of a proscenium arch of a theater. But that was the whole form of Busby Berkeley. If you remember his movies, for example, he did a sequence, uh, Shuffle Off to Buffalo, which was in theory on a soundstage. He had a train going through the mountains. And, <laughs> and uh, so we tried to do more of the same and to make it not a not a ridiculous look at it, because I loved what Buzzy Berkeley did, and I was trying to say, yes, I really loved it, and here it is, and isn't it naive, and isn't it funny, and isn't it likable and entertaining? That's what I, that's what I was trying to reach for. Mr. Donnan, when you did Singing in the Rain, and what was your credit on that? Co-director. Co-director, okay. When, when you did that, did you and Gene Kelly realize that you were breaking so much new ground and that you were, in fact, creating what became a classic? No. All right. I don't think we did. No, of course not. We did the best we could, just like I just did on Movie Movie. You do. You have a feeling for a movie. You, we knew it was fun. We knew it was entertaining. We knew it was... It had all the energy we felt. It was, again, a film about movies. As you can see, I love movies. And uh, I want to put all my attention into films that are about movies, not all of it, but I like to have the same joy of looking at movies in the movie. But of course we didn't know. We didn't know that it would be. We hoped that it would be well received. It wasn't as well received then as it is now. It was, it was just a movie. At, Critics at didn't flip over it? Mm, not in America. They liked it. Do you have one portion of Singing in the Rain that's your very special moment that you like? I was just saying the other day, the part that probably makes me laugh more than anything is Donald O'Connor poking fun at the diction teacher when the diction teacher is saying chewy cheddar cheese and chives, and Donald says, oh, wonderful, do another, do another. No, there are lots of moments I like, nothing more than another, but he, he Donald, was so funny in that with the diction coach. It's a particularly amusing moment. I don't know why. Mr. Downen, it's really been nice having this chance to talk with you. Thank you. And uh, we hope that Movie Movie is a big success success for you. Thank you very much. Nice indeed. seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. That can't have been seven okay. minutes. some smarts along the way. Who knows? Maybe he was writer then. I don't know. I'm just telling you it's different.